Hey, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and we are looking at a game that I'm really excited about. This is Hostage Negotiator from Van Ryder Games, with the new Career expansion that just came out. So if you're not familiar, Hostage Negotiator is a solo-only game where you play, you guessed it, a Hostage Negotiator. And it's had a ton of little expansions that add abductors, and also a big expansion called Crime Wave that's also a standalone. But the newest expansion, Career, is this crazy, ambitious project that takes basically everything and throws it together, so that instead of playing one-off games, you are playing through an entire entire 10 year career with your successes and your failures kind of affecting how things go in your life as a police officer. What I'm going to show you in this video is the beginning of a career, so there will be minimal spoilers, and also one full negotiation. So if you haven't seen the base hostage negotiator game, you'll also understand how that works. And what I just said was based on our Patreon members voting. They wanted to see the beginning of a career, not something more in the middle where more things have built up. And speaking of Patreon, if you like what you see here on the One Stop Co-op Shop, consider supporting us for some nice perks. Also, listen to our podcast on Sundays, and consider joining the conversation on either our Slack or Discord channels. Oh, and quick disclaimers, I had the Hostage Negotiator base game, but Van Ryder Games did send me review copies of the other expansions. And also, full disclosure, Van Ryder Games published our first game design, Salvation Road, so there is some history there. So setup for the career mode itself is pretty simple. I've got this nice mat here, but if you don't have this, you use the basic crime wave board and some other stuff to set it all up. First, you have three tracks you're keeping track of. Your merit level starts at one, then your career stress and your personal stress both start at two. You also begin with your rank as a lowly officer, and you get to pick the base game or crime wave conversation cards. We'll see those in a moment. You take this humongous deck, this is not even all of them, of cards for each year in your career, and you build a random deck year one through year 10, and this will basically control your fate for a lot of the game. You also take five specific abductors, kind of the simpler ones, to start your career, and you use them to start out your campaign abductor deck you'll be drawing from. You shuffle together all the personal cards, you'll be drawing these at the end of each year, and you build a gigantic pool of 25 hostages, this is from both the base game and crime wave. These will be your hostages for the entire campaign. Uh, each time one dies, they get taken out. And if you ever run out completely, then you are fired from the force in disgrace. And as I noted, my officer rank instructed me to pick one of the sets of conversation cards. I picked the ones with a female negotiator on them, which are from the Crime Wave expansion slash standalone set. That's basically it for setting up your career. We'll go through setup and how to play for actual hostage negotiator once we get to our first negotiation. But the way this is laid out at the top here goes through the sequence for each year in your career. First, if you have one or more stressor cards, we don't have any right now, you shuffle them all and draw one at random. Then you flip the top card of your career. You usually get to make a choice and have some repercussions. Then often you'll draw a random abductor and play a full game of hostage negotiator. And then finally, will draw the top personal card to end out your year. So here we're just going to see our year one card. Fresh out of training, hardly a day goes by that you don't endure hazing of some sort by the other negotiators. Tradition, they say, keeps you on your toes until your first call, they say. And then we have a reminder here to add the five abductors I already mentioned. We can either tell the chief the hazing has gotten ridiculous and is beyond the point of being merely a distraction, or endure the hazing despite the effects on your emotional health. After all, it is a rite of passage everyone goes through. Well, <laughs> not sure how it will affect things, but there's no way I'm letting hazing stand, so I'm going to pick the left option. So you take a handy-dandy little red plastic thing. Things settle down at work, but now the vets won't give you the time of day. All right, so I get minus one career stress, but plus one personal stress. And I gain the stressor colleagues, so my uh, theoretical friends have it in for me. So my career stress is down to one, the lowest it can be, but personal stress is up to three. And some of these cards and effects will have you roll against those and have an effect whether you roll higher or lower. And finally, it said I gain a stressor for colleagues. And the cool thing about all this stuff, just like the years, is that you have a whole bunch of them, so you might never even see the same one, even uh, making the same choices. So we'll take a random colleagues one. 
and we add it here, but we won't have to deal with that stressor until the beginning of year two. And then we flip the card upside down and see what crisis we have. Just when you think it's never going to happen, you get the call. With nervous excitement, you head to the scene. Draw a campaign abductor. Here we go. Ah, here's an appropriate one for me. Donna Scarborough, the uh, bitter teacher. So now I'm going to pause things and teach you how to play hostage negotiator, but if you already know all of that, feel free to use the timestamps to skip right to the actual game starting. So the first thing you're going to do is set up your conversation cards. And you'll see that each one has a conversation point cost in the bottom right. You have six of them that cost zero, and then they go up to eight. And you just want to lay them out so you can see all your options. I go from lowest to highest cost. And the six zero cards form your starting hand. You take the big deck of terror cards. You can use the ones from the base game or Crime Wave. I'm doing Crime Wave again. And you shuffle them and take 10 at random. Then you take one pivotal event card and you put that at the bottom of the regular terror decks. So you'll have 11 terror cards, the bottom one being a pivotal terror card. Now it's important to note that many of the abductors change those setup rules, but Donna doesn't. She does have some starting demands though. She has one Donna major demand and one escape demand. So major demands will generally be keyed after the abductor like these ones. So you just take a random one. Whereas escape demands tend to be a communal deck. So we'll just take a random one of those as well. And just to kind of show you, I have the major demand here, the escape demand here. All demands start out face down. They are unrevealed. My terror deck here. And I take a second in command card and put it under the card for the abductor. If I happen to take out Donna, then their second in command will kind of finish up the game for them. Some other important setup details are here. I've got 12 hostages and the starting threat level. So I put 12 hostages in the hostage pool. They're going to come from my big pool of 25, remember? I'm going to put the little blue speech bubble token on the zero space for the conversation point tracker here. The little red meeple on the starting threat level, which was again two. And once I take my six zero cards, I'm ready to face her. So to give you a quick overview of the basics of Hostage Negotiator, you win the game if the hostage pool is completely empty, so they've all been either saved or killed, and then you either get the abductor to surrender, or you kill them with a sniper or something. But to successfully win, you have to have more hostages saved than killed. And don't forget in the campaign, it's even more important because these hostages who are killed are gone forever from your total. Meanwhile, if the terror deck runs out when that pivotal event comes out, you only have one more turn, otherwise the abductor gets away. Also, escape cards can help them get away, and a lot of other abductors have special ways to end the game, so we'll see how that goes. In terms of the actual turn structure, first you have a negotiations phase where you can play the cards from your hand. Each card can be played face down for one conversation point, which will let you buy better cards later. Alternatively, you can play a card for its action, like this small talk one. You look at your current threat level and you roll the indicated number of dice. So from threat two to six, you roll two dice. When you're on the K, you only roll one die. And if you're at one or S level, you roll three dice. And the dice have three total miss sides, two sides with badge icon successes. And then if you roll a four, you can discard two other cards from your hand for no effect to convert it into a success. And the card will show you what happens if you get just one success, two or more successes, or no successes. Uh, in this case, you gain this many conversation points. The little X means you can't play any more cards this conversation phase. Once you've played all the cards you want to play and you don't have to play them all, you go into a spend phase where you can spend as many of the conversation points as you want, getting cards from here to add them to your hand. Now a key thing is any cards you played this turn are over here in the play area, so they are not available to be purchased. But after you've spent all the points you want to, the cards that you played this turn go back into the available area, which means next turn you'll be able to get them. And the zero cost cards, this is really important, they'll kind of go out of your hand and come back in in this way. You just have to basically lose them for one turn, the ones you use. After you've played all your cards and spent your points, you'll draw the top card of the terror deck. It'll often kill hostages or add more demands or change the threat level. And a key thing, the threat track kind of gives you a reminder. If the threat level is ever at S and it would decrease more, one hostage gets saved. If it's ever at K and it would increase again, one hostage gets killed. And a quick strategy note, a lot of these cards will be worse if you have any unrevealed demands. And demands look like this. They'll tell you something you have to do at the top to concede them. They'll often give you a bonus. And then they'll usually have some kind of penalty for giving in to the abductor. In the case of escape demands, you only do it when you want to finish the game because the penalty is pretty much always that they escape and you lose. Now there are some other fine points I'll discuss as they come up, but that's basically it. You use the cards, you spend your points to get more cards, you flip a tarot card, rinse and repeat. By the way, some quick backstory on Donna. Donna just got passed over for tenure, again. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. 
Today her students were shocked when, instead of lecture notes, she pulled out two Glock 23s. Donna isn't letting anyone go until she gets what she wants. She has decided this is the only way to make them understand how deserving she really is. And she does have a special rule, most abductors do. Anytime you roll the dice, if you get two ones or more, then she kills a hostage. If you get two sixes or more, she releases a hostage. So she's a little off the deep end. She could do anything at any time. All right, so let's get into playing my cards. And I'll go through the zeros real quick because you're gonna see them so often. So small talk just gets me more conversation points. And even if I fail, I still get the one I would have gotten for playing it face down anyway. So it's a good way to kind of end my turn. Keep cool decreases the threat level by one. And that's pretty huge here because she starts pretty friendly. So if she goes down to a one, I'll be rolling three dice every turn instead of two. And finally, what are your demands? Let's me reveal her demands. And don't forget, those can give me nice bonuses, and also a lot of the tarot cards are worse until I reveal all of them. So let's start out playing Keep Cool. I roll two dice for the threat level being two. And nice, one success, and I could get a second. But one success is getting me the minus one threat I wanted. Two successes would just get me a extra conversation point. That's not worth it. So Keep Cool goes in my play area, and the threat marker goes down to one. I'm rolling three dice now. So now's the time to act before that increases. Let's see what her demands are with what are your demands. Three dice now. And awesome. Two or more successes, I reveal a demand and I gain two conversation points. So we get two. I think I'd rather know her major demand first. Psych evaluation. Donna needs a psych evaluation, but she won't admit it to herself. You are confident you can convince her that she needs help. Okay, so I have to spend X conversation points to convince her she needs help. It's equal to the sum of hostages killed and still in the pool, so that's just uh, 12 right now. Once I've done this, I double the effect of all green symbols for the rest of the game. Wow, so I would double my hostage saving and no penalty for conceding. It's just uh, spending all the points. That'll be tough to make happen until at least some of these hostages are saved. All right, well, let's strike while the iron is hot and while my chances are good. I'm actually gonna play keep cool again, try to get it to S. That'll set me up to save some hostages next turn. And also that means that if she increases threat by one, I'll still be in the three dice territory. I don't wanna knock the hostages anymore, so we'll roll in here. Oh, okay. So I can either discard two cards in my hand to get the minus one threat, or I can not do that and lose one conversation point. Now those two cards could become two conversation points, maybe more, but yeah, we'll do it. I do want to find out her other demands. Let's get rid of both my small talks and that'll get her to the S. And again, I don't have to play my entire hand. Often I wouldn't, but because uh, she's in such an agreeable mood and I want to maybe find out that last demand and not suffer for it, let's try it. Oof. Terrible rolling. I get a plus one threat back. That was pretty much a waste. But I do still have two conversation points. Now remember that none of my zero cost cards are available at the moment because I use them all this turn. So to show you the ones I can afford, consider this costs one. It lets me re-roll a threat die after I roll it. You talk, I'll listen, gets me extra conversation points. And if you get lucky and get two successes, it comes back to your hand. So it can be worth tons of points. You're in a tight spot. I can help boost your next roll if you're successful. And finally, just take a breath, lowers the threat level, especially if the killer is all the way up at the K level, really angry. I'm actually gonna go with you're in a tight spot, I can help. It'll get me conversation points back to buy more stuff next turn and also uh, hopefully boost a roll. But that's my entire hand for next turn, so I'm probably just gonna hang out. Now we're gonna draw the top tarot card. It says minor demand medicine. These are actually usually good because they don't hurt you in the immediate moment. They just go up with the demands as a revealed card and give you options to use. So I can concede when she's about to kill a hostage to cancel that. I guess basically we get the medicine instead of her killing them. But if I do, I have to flip a red tarot card into the discard pile with no effect. So I have to uh, accelerate how soon the game will end. But still, that's a super great draw because something bad happened. Oh, and my conversation point tracker goes down to zero, of course. And all of the cards that were in my play area go back to the available pile for this next turn. So second conversation phase, I only have a single card and it's a boost card, so I'm not doing anything. And I have zero conversation points, so I just get all six of my zero cost cards back. Donna draws another tarot card. Oh, I'm mad as hell, plus two threat. And yeah, there's a reason that I often don't go for the threat game unless it starts low like that, because you just kind of uh, go back and forth and back and forth. It's usually more kind of efficient to stay in the two to six area and get things done. So with that in mind, let's try to find out what her demands are with just two dice. There we go. So interesting, with one success, I could just reveal the demand. With two, I could reveal the demand and gain two conversation points. But discarding two cards, I could also discard each of them for one conversation point anyway, so we don't need to do that. So we get to find out her final demand for now, her escape demand. She wants us to shut down the power citywide. So we can spend two conversation points to concede it. 
And we gain X conversation points where X is equal to the current threat level. And then we can purchase a card from the available area, which normally you can't do during the conversation phase. But since it's an escape to hand, if we do that, she actually does escape and kill all the hostages at the end of the turn. So that's not going to happen until the very end, maybe. All right, for the rest of this turn, I'm going to try to build up conversation points. Again, I'm not going to worry much about keeping her cool. So I'll take one keep cool, one what are your demands, play them face down. That'll be two more conversation points. And then I'll try to play some small talks and hopefully get more. Here's my first one. Oof, failure. But remember, small talk isn't that bad on failure. You gain one conversation point anyway, as though you played it face down, but your turn does end. So I'm up to three total. And the only card you haven't seen that costs three is Hostage Escort. So I could start getting hostages out that way. But I think I might get a you talk, I'll listen to try to get enough conversation points to do the psych eval eventually, and a reroll card. And then the four cards I played this turn now are available. I couldn't have bought them this turn. This goes back down to zero. She draws plus one threat again. It would have been plus two if I had any unrevealed demands. I don't, luckily. All right, so let's try my luck with you talk, I'll listen. Hopefully it'll at least pay for itself. Ooh, awesome. Oh, I've forgotten to be checking this. So hopefully it didn't happen before, but I got a five and a six, not double six or double one. I wonder if she saved or killed any hostages. So you talk, I'll listen. I get three conversation points right now, and I'm going to get this back at the end of this conversation. So I'll have it again. That is awesome. So considering that, I'm going to play my keep cool face down to get it to four. And then play small talk to finish the turn. I'll save all these boost cards for later. All right, come on. All right, so failure, but for small talk, that still gives me plus one, so I get the five. All right, let's see what new cards I can afford. Little compromises I love. The negative effect is terrible, but if you succeed, you get conversation points and reduce threat and save hostages. Play hardball is great to save up to those big values. Uh, I can get you up to plus five, but that's only if you have an unrevealed demand, which I do not anymore. And then extended conversation is one of the best boosters in the game. For the entire rest of the turn, you get bonus dice and fours become successes. But look, if you fail, all your conversation cards get discarded. Yikes. Right here, I like little compromises too much. I'll definitely take that one. And then I can still afford the other consider this. And I've got my four level zeros that I hadn't played this turn. Oh, and I forgot, I get that you'll talk, I'll listen back. Awesome. But on the negative side, I've not progressed at much through a bunch of turns. Let's see, choose one of the following options. Pick your poison. Plus two threat, minus one die for the next conversation phase, or flip two red cards into the discard pile with no effect. I think I'll take the minus one die and just kind of burn through this turn again. I can't afford to do that too much. So I don't actually roll anything important. I've got four level threes. Let's uh, discard three of them for three conversation points and then play small talk. Worst case, I'll get the four conversation points. So only one die because of the effect. <laughs> okay. So means I'm up to five. And this is pretty important. You can't go above 10 cards. I've got five in my hand. I'm about to get two back for free. So I can only fit three more cards at the moment. Which one do I want? How about another you talk, I'll listen and finally get a hostage escort. All right, that negative die effect is gone, but another terror card. I like talking to you. You may gain two free points, love it. If you do, no hostages may be saved during the next conversation. If you don't, plus one threat. Okay, so I'm not gonna save hostages, but this looks like it's my turn to uh, try to get, I mean, gosh, no one has gone out, so I'll try to get uh, 12 points, I guess. All right, so let's do both my you talk, I'll listens first. I've got a lot of cards and re-rolls if I get uh, nothing on them. Okay, on my first one. Uh, one success, I'll take it. So that's just two points, but I don't get it back. All right, let's play my second you talk, I'll listen. Oof. Okay, um, I got two re-roll cards. So let's play the first one. It just re-rolls one die. Come on, come on. Okay, God. Discard two cards. This is certainly not becoming worth it. Um, I want to keep the small talk, so I'll do keep cool and consider this, I guess. So that gets me to six. I'm still not even close to having enough. Why did I think I could get 12? All right, well, let's end the turn by playing small talk. Okay, and then two more, so we get to eight. Nothing's going quite the way I want. I'll get a hostage escort, so I have two of them. Extended conversation, the full turn boost, that's the other five, and my four zero cards. Oh, wow, another minor demand. Beer, concede during any conversation to take any conversation card from the available area into your hand for free, and then plus two? Wow. Plus two actually would not put me into danger territory. All right, so here's my idea. I want to get extended conversation helping me, but I think I want to play you're in a tight spot first to boost the die to get it. 
And then if I get that, I can concede the beer, get some huge card, do like a bunch of hostage rescues, take advantage of the bonus to my turn. So let's start with you're in a tight spot. I can help. Just two dice. Okay. All right, so if I can ditch two cards, I'll get plus one and plus one die the next roll. Yeah, I'll get rid of both. What are your demands for that? So I get one conversation point and I roll three dice for my next thing. We'll do extended conversation for that. I do not want to fail. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, yes. Okay, boom. So I get plus two dice for every roll for this conversation and fours or successes without discarding any cards. Awesome. Let's make some stuff happen. And right, I've got a ton of hostage cards in my hand, so let's do little compromises. Uh, start saving some people. Up to four dice for all my rolls. Okay, one. Uh, I guess I'm only going to save one hostage regardless, so that's okay. So plus one conversation, minus one threat, one hostage. Hey, we finally saved somebody. Yikes. All right, I am going to give her some beer, and while she's intoxicated, that's going to raise it up to five. I'm going to get not the most expensive card, but it can get me some hostages, secret extraction. Let's play that one next. Come on, big money. Ooh, I gotta pay attention to this. No, no, it's six and five. Okay, so no doubles again. But I do rescue three more hostages. That is four. Now I'm feeling a little better. Okay, let's do a regular hostage escort, which can raise the threat level. Okay, it is a success, and no double sixes or ones. Remember, that's a success, but it's just one success. So that means threat does go up to six, but we save another hostage. Let's play keep cool before we play the next hostage escort to get it back down to five. Okay, no doubles, and that's two successes. So this goes down one, and I gain a conversation point. Okay, now my second hostage escort. Okay, that's two successes with the bonus. So that is two hostages and no threat increase. Oh, and wow, you know what? I can actually get her the psych evaluation now because it's only going to cost me five instead of uh, whatever it was, 12. So let's do small talk, try to boost myself a bit past that. Okay, I got one success. That's all I needed. Ooh. But there are double ones, so she does kill a hostage. Darn it. I could prevent it, but then I would have to discard an extra red card. Oh, I have a ton left. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to use medicine, save that hostage, but get rid of a red card. All right, but it did get me up to six conversation points. There's five hostages in the pool. So let's concede the psych evaluation. That means that now I'll double all hostage saving results, but I go down to one. That's all my cards. Man, that was a big turn. So I can get the two zeros available and the only card I can buy for one. I consider this. I'll have to kind of do nothing for another turn. Okay, and her terror card. Okay, you aren't listening to me. Plus one for each unrevealed demand card in play. Uh, they're all revealed. Discard all what are your demand cards from your hand. I don't have any just by chance. And then if there were any unrevealed demands, I would get to reveal one for free. So that was just a nothing card. Beautiful. All right, going into my next turn, I'm going to play keep cool just for one conversation. Keep consider this and roll for small talk. Back to two dice, that seems so sad. Hey, but I got it, so that's a three overall. And let's spend them now that it's doubled on hostage escort, yes. And I also get back all four of my zero cards, so a decent hand again. Are we only gonna... All right, we only got three cards left. Oh, whoops, I don't have time for this. We only have two cards left. Oh, I like talking to you. Gain two points and then I can't save hostages. That's okay. Let's build up for one final turn to just clean everything up. So I get two points, but I can't save any hostages this turn. And by the way, I didn't say you only win if the original abductor is dead and all the hostages are gone, or if all the hostages are gone and you get one more save a hostage result. So in any case, I got to do something with those final five hostages. All right, so I can't play hostage escort this turn. So let's do what are your demands and get two points and then play some small talks and call it a day. So that's four before I roll. First small talk. Okay, I'm definitely not going to use that, but I'll take the success. Gets me to six. Oh, and that was the only one I had. That's a keep cool. So I guess I'll go to seven. It seems like the pretty obvious choice is secret extraction. I mean, that'll be four or six hostages. Six would win me the game immediately. Four would get me one away from winning. And then if I succeed at the hostage escort, I win. And I can spend the last one and consider this and get my other small talk and keep cool. And the other consider this. I didn't play this turn. But we are going to the pivotal event. This can make some crazy stuff happen. 
I just need to get out of here. For the remainder of the game, only escape demands may be conceded. Okay, that was actually pretty lucky, because that's the only one we have. And remember, what is our escape demand? We can spend two to gain X, which would be five right now, and then we can buy a card. Now, the thing is, during the final pivotal round, you can buy cards from the market anyway, so that second part won't apply. But it also means I can get all four of these zeros that just went to the available card supply straight into my hand. So I have a ton of stuff. So here's what I want to do. I want to take two of these zeros, get two points, tell her we'll turn off the power and get five points because I lose the two and gain five. I want to get rid of two more random cards to get to seven. I'll keep my last two as oh crap options if I roll badly. Then for the seven, we'll try my little combo again. I'll get you're in a tight spot and extended conversation. We'll play you're in a tight spot first, try to boost to extended conversation, try to use that to get all the hostages out and win this game. All right, so you're in a tight spot first. Come on, come on, come on. Okay, I can do that. So that'll give me plus one point, not doing much, then plus one die. Now I'll play Extended Conversation with three dice. Come on, come on. Oh, man. All right, well, I didn't want to have to do this, but I guess I'll use Consider This to make it a success. So now I have plus one die and fours are successes again. Now let's do Secret Extraction first since it can't raise a threat level and then end with Hostage Escort. Let's see how it goes. This is what it comes down to. Secret Extraction! Oh man, that is nothing. Um, okay, this, <laughs> this isn't too bad. Uh, she finds out while they're sneaking out, so she kills two. But remember, this is doubled, so I save two. So I lost two hostages, but only one is left in the pool. Which means if I get at least one success here, I'll save one and it's doubled. The second one will make her surrender. Come on, one success. Give me one success. Yes! So again, I double this. First one saves this guy. Second one captures her. Successful negotiation. Two people died, unfortunately. They are taken out of the pool of 25 forever. But I saved 10 and lost two. I can live with those numbers, I think. Now that's where a regular game of Hostage Negotiator would end, but we get to do a personal card at the end of each of our years. Let's see, this one says, if you have any two CPR rewards and or digital forensic rewards, discard this card and draw another. You are given an opportunity to go to an advanced training seminar, but it would have to be done in your vacation time and leaving for training could take away from the momentum you have built at work. You have to decide if you will go to the training or not. So I can take the advanced training or save vacation days. I mean, it's gotta be advanced training, right? All right, a little hard to read here, sorry. You go to the seminar and the training is top notch. Captain Bullock, whom despite the large scar on his cheek is a big teddy bear and a heck of instructor. You are now advanced certified to teach other basic skills in your chosen area of expertise. If you already have CPR or digital forensics, gain the second card of the same type. If you have one of each, you may first discard one of your choice. Otherwise, gain rewards, CPR, or digital forensics. So another fun thing, you have all these reward cards you can get into. Let's uh, do digital forensics, I think. Every single time I do a negotiation, I get to look at one unrevealed demand for free? That is amazing. And then finally, on the bottom of your personal card, you see what happened because of your investigation. So we had a successful negotiation, minus one personal stress, plus two merit. Merit means I have a better chance of getting promoted later. Well, this is great. Personal stress is what I had. So I am rocking after my first negotiation. So there you go. That's the end of my first year of this career campaign. Uh, next year, I would get to see how my stress with my colleagues is going, resolve another year, uh, face down someone else because Donna is gone. I have captured her and see how my personal life continues to go. So there's so much more to see, but that is it for today. Click the link that just popped up if you want to see my review on Hostage Negotiator with a little bonus about career specifically. Good gaming, and I'll see you at the next stop.